since this is a new show, why don't you go ahead and quickly describe your characters for us? Sure. Um, Bill and I are members of the Godfrey family, who are like the, the central family of the uh, of Hemlock Grove. I guess you could liken them to the Carnegie family in many respects. They're um, hugely philanthropic and uh, influential within the town, which obviously comes with a lot of perks, but also a lot of responsibility. Um, I guess in many respects we respect we represent polar opposites. So we're cousins, I guess. Roman's pushing a lot of boundaries, whereas Letha is possibly probably a little bit more grounded in her moralistic approach to to, to the world. Um, but that's why we love each other. So, yeah, yeah, that's a start. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, and they're really good friends. Like Roman and Letha has this, has this very. Um, found relationship yeah it's complex <laughs> and it's very complex and and you know um yeah and you know me yeah my character is from this from the same family and he's kind of the he's the heir to the to to all the money and the wealth uh within the godfrey family and that kind of you know breeds this kind of really arrogant young kid that kind of always got what he's wanted what he what he, what he wanted and 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 he's incredibly bored <laughs> with everyone and everything, and and he, he, I think he also feels really alone, and in because he has this kind of urges, and he's very different from 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 an ordinary kid. And when he meets Peter, that's where kind of he instantly finds a connection with someone that's also different in 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 another way, but also very different and not like everyone else. So they have this immediate connection, um, and um, and yeah, yeah. <coughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> I had a question. So you guys um, have a really great kind of um, chemistry, I think, all online. There's a couple of really great relationships in the show that have great chemistry, and you guys are definitely one of those two. Very unique kind of relationship. I mean, is there a way where you guys can – is that something that's going to develop as the series goes on? We've seen the first three episodes for us, and we've already seen yeah. a certain way, and there's a certain kind of strength in your feelings towards her especially. Is there yeah, way? yeah, yeah. Is that yeah, no, for sure. It's – um. It's a strange relationship. I, I think, you know, Ragged Roman in his own way is kind of obsessed with Letha. <laughs> like, um, is, 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 you know, the only one in his life that he can completely be, you know, not guarded with. Like, he could be himself in, in a way. And, and I think that that means like, that she, she's, you know, of, com, like he really values their relationship so much. And, and he also has this, yeah, he's kind of obsessed with her in a way. And, uh, Kind of in a way that you shouldn't be towards your cousin, maybe. <laughs> uh, uh, but I guess, like in a deeper level as well, like in like a world that's so devoid of boundaries or a definition, he can have whatever he wants. I think she's the one thing that has always remained constant for him, which is really mm. grounding as well. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's, it's very complicated. It's so much love. <laughs> so much love. <laughs> yeah. No. And he's yeah. So he's he's definitely he's you know obsessed and and uh, and therefore and it's, yeah it's like you know and he doesn't like you know and boys talk to her or you know he's just like you know he's he's he and he he's a special guy <laughs> <laughs> he's actually described um by one of the other characters as a sociopath would that is that how you would describe him as well or do you think it's he's misunderstood um no i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't describe him as a sociopath um he's like the thing about him is that that's so interesting is like he is something else he's not human um and you know that will be more explored throughout the season uh, it's kind of you know it's kind of planted there from the start that he's something else, but but he's not he's not he's not human entirely, and uh, and he has but you know he's not a sociopath that he's he's not connected like he feels he feels love and he feels all these emotions like he's very emotional he's super emotional actually. He's a teenager as well at the end of the day. You know? Oh he's, he's yeah yeah he's a messed up he's a, he's a messed up you know young man. We've all been there. <laughs> but but. Um, <laughs> <Certainly not. laughs> I, I really hope you haven't been <laughs> Roman. <laughs> no, not to that degree. <laughs> but 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 yeah, you know. So 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 I wouldn't describe him as a sociopath. Like he has like in throughout the season, you also find and you also learn more about his huge heart that he has, especially his love for his younger sister Shelly. And, and 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 he like loves her unquestionably and just you know you know. Um, um, and it's it's so it's, it's he's a very complex character that way that he's not a sociopath like he's not like he, he has a lot of emotion for a lot of you know things but he's he's kind of losing his track of himself uh, and throughout the season and, and trying to just grab hold of something to maintain sane. When it comes to the uh, mythology of the monsters, these are creatures that we've all kind of seen before, but Hemlock Grove seems to bring a little you know 
new elements to it. Yeah. Um, in, in what way did the show uh, reinvent that mythology, uh, and in which ways did it impress you guys the most? I think something that was really, I, I found most remarkable about the show was that I think it, it humanizes a lot of these monsters in the sense that it's an exploration of like the human condition just as much as it is of the horror genre or gothic literature, which makes it so interesting to watch and also to act in because, I mean, we're not that far removed from these monsters and, and that's constantly something, that uncanny element is something that lingers throughout the show because you're not quite sure what is real and what is... You know something else. Um, so I think that's definitely very unique, particularly to what we're seeing a lot at the moment, where it's like these crazy parallel universes that everyone's like just totally okay with. I mean, the show is very realistic, and it could just be any other town, um, which makes it really remarkable and really fascinating. Yeah. Yeah. And it's also sense. yeah because there's this theme of you know the monster, and it's like if you watch the show and you find that there's so many different types of monsters in this book, you know, or in this uh, in this show. I mean, it's like, you know, you have you have you know, monsters that are, you know, monsters like Shelly, for instance, like maybe can be described as monsters just by looking at her. But she's, uh, you know, super intelligent and, you know, has the biggest heart in the show. You know, there's no one kinder than Shelly. So in, inside, she's not the monster, you know. So and then you have people that are, that you know might have the, the monster might be within, which is also one of the you know uh, 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 taglines of the show, and 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 so there's all these different types of uh, you know kind of playing with what a monster really is, and 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 when it comes down to you know like Penelope was saying is it's like we the, the show uses all these supernatural creatures not to to, to like to basically to 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 enhance uh, characters more than. To, to oh it's a creature it's like it's you know Shakespearean mirror kind of thing yeah you know, it's just it's like making you know just making a very very deep and 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 intriguing character like in, in Roman for instance he's, he's just like he's something else you know he's something else he's not a sociopath you know he's something else he's his you know Brian's own take on this kind of creature and we're in this you know where he's at so it, I think it, it makes for a really intriguing show and intriguing characters we'll be like wow you know this um, yeah it's going to be so interesting this to young man is something what, what is he I want to find out what's going on with this person and where he's going to end up you know so 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 yeah me reading the pilot I was like I, I think there's super refreshing in, in, in something else you and know cool. in the genre yeah, yeah. And unexpected, to say the least. <laughs> Did you find yourselves wanting to read the book as soon as you got through? Um, well, yeah, I, I was cast pre- in a number of days, so yeah, as soon as I got the role, I kind of sat down and locked everything out. And it's such a dense narrative, and there's so much going on that, yeah, I read it several times, because every time I'd read it, I'd find something different. And I guess it was similar for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I read the book, like, before I got the part. <laughs> Like Brian gave it to me and we had a meeting uh, uh, and I got the book so I was like so I and I read the book I, I was like I don't want to read it if I don't get it you know what I mean because <laughs> kind of this like and then I have I had a flight uh, back to Stockholm and I was like all right ah oh, what the hell it's just, it's just, it's just start reading. I, I thought I was, I'm gonna jinx it if I read it you know because I really wanted the project <laughs> and I thought the pilot was so good so I started reading on the plane and I was like oh, and I was like oh no oh no like the, just the stuff that Roman goes through I was like Oh yes! Oh no! Yes! Yeah. You know, I was just like sitting there, just like, like feeling so much yeah. more and more, and so much more connected Weeping with the character. At the end. It was pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, and it was like, but not knowing that you, that I had the part. I've done this before with you know film you that I did. Identify so much. But I was just like, it. if I don't, like, I'll kill myself if I don't get this part now because I felt so attached to the character already, you know. And you know, luckily, fortunately, I, I got the part, and I was like, you know. Uh, yeah, nothing would suck excited. more than seeing someone else play the role. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you, you, you go, like, because I auditioned for it, and it's, like, a different thing. Like, I auditioned for it, and I met with the showrunners, and, you know, we sat down, and we had this creative, amazing meeting, and I got the book, and, you know, like, I went out there, I'm like, all right, you know, what, what, what am I going to do now? Like, and I started reading it, and I was like, yeah, you know, you, you kind of, you get, you get, like, I immediately felt this connection with the project, and to, to see someone just, like, oh, no, you didn't get a part, and see someone else. Thank okay, God that yeah. I can't. One of the things we were it. discussing before, though, was, was how just um, beneficial it was having that text there. I guess it was kind of the holy grail. I mean, obviously, it, did, it deviates in a great way. It kind of blooms and 
the characters are defined and there's so much more depth to them in the actual series. But having that there with a six-month project and being able to map out your trajectory and knowing ultimately where it is going to end up just gave us so much more freedom to play within those boundaries. So, yeah, we're so fortunate to have that text there. It For sure. became our little Bible, I guess. <laughs> are you folks uh, fans of vampires, werewolves, and all this kind of stuff personally? In real life? Yeah, I, I was um, a lit Besides major Twilight. at uni. Yeah. <laughs> So, mm, we're not going to go there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I definitely am a massive gothic literature fan, and um, the sensibilities were something that really appealed to me on a personal level, so it was a massive bonus being able to play within those confines. But, yeah. Oh, I've always been really fascinated. I remember seeing uh, uh, an American werewolf in London <laughs> when I was like, my oh, yeah, brother had so it on rad. a VGS cassette, that. and... And I, you know, I just saw, you know, the, you see the, you know, the, 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 the cover of it, just like this werewolf, and it's like, it looks so scary. And I remember I, I, like, I was probably 10 or something like that, and I stole that VHS, and I saw it in my room with my friend. It's a and killer movie. It's so good, and it's super terrifying. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. the beginning, when, when, when they're walking around in the darkness, and it's like in, in, the, in, the, in the forest, yeah. and, they, and you just hear this, like, yeah. and you're just like, oh. So, you know, and, and, and that was like, you know, a huge thing for me. Like, I love that even at a really early age, you know, the, the mysterious, and it was like, because, you know, I was 10 when I saw it, but I, but I, but I also kind of believed that this creature could exist, you know, it was so terrifying. And, and you know, uh, also like, you know, Interview with the Vampires, also like a film that I saw yeah. pretty young as well, it's like completely mesmerized by how they kind of, you know, uh, created those vampires, they, they felt like, they felt so real to me, they yeah, felt they so mysterious that they could actually, actually exist, and they have this, you know, and and and, and the really way they looked and they had, yeah charismatic and they just like all the time and like they they never age and they go through the, all these different times yeah. and they're like stuck in their own time so like the world is changing but they can't change it's like it all it had all these kind of really kind of psychological uh, you know questions about you know and 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 and, and so 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 for sure and uh, that's you know I think that um, Brian has created. Uh, he has he's done these creatures really justice in the way of maintaining them super mysterious and, and created you know in in the hemlock robe universe this is the rules like there's no like well you can vampires go in sunlight or can like mm, it doesn't matter this is hemlock robe this is it's how this is how they are in this universe and he's he's i think he's done justice to the characters and the creatures